Pevsner has not been kind to Melcham. He says, of the small towns of Wiltshire, Melcham has the least character and the least enjoyable buildings. I think that is unfair. There are many enjoyable buildings in Melksham if one is prepared to search them out. It has its blue plaque trail to help find them. In addition to this, I have used Pevsner's Buildings of Wiltshire, the Victoria County History, and descriptions in the list of listed buildings. Most of the interesting buildings are on the north-south spine through the town, formed by King Street, High Street, Bank Street and Bath Road, and the area to the west around Cannon Square and the parish church, the area with the most character. So I shall start at the south end of the town and head to Bath Road, with detours along Lowbourne and Cannon Square, and finish along Spa Road. First, we pick up two farmhouses on Semington Road at the southern end of town, West End Farm and Conniger Farm, both of which date from the late 17th or early 18th century. West End Farm, now a pub, is of rubble stone with a stone slate roof, which has a Cotswold feel to it, while Conniger Farm is of brick with stone coins and a Welsh slate roof. 42 King Street is of particular interest. It is an early 18th century house with a late 16th century southern range and an old forge at the rear. The south range has retained its pre-1700 timber-framed scissor-braced roof and a moulded four-panel ceiling to the ground floor of very high quality, suggesting it was once a house of high status. The forge at the rear retains a truncated stack and capped hearth. Further up, on the opposite side of the road, is a terrace of late 18th century cottages and a fine late 18th century house by the entrance to Kingsmead Square. Nonconformism was strong in Melksham and there are chapels of many denominations. Melksham was an important centre for the Quakers and opposite is the former Friends Meeting House of 1734, now a spiritualist church, with ashlar stone frontage and a stone slate roof. To the north, the Quaker cottage has a date of 1705 on the lintel. A group of 18th century cottages, now shops, on the left bring us to the marketplace. The marketplace is a large space, but any sense of coherence is lost by the need to manage the traffic through it. It once had a lock-up in the centre. Its focal point is the town hall. This was originally built in 1847 as a cheese hall. Later it became the offices of the Urban District Council and the town hall. Built of ashlar stone, Pevsner comments that its first floor windows were so extremely elongated as pleased the forties only. Linked to it by an arch, once matched on the other side of the building, is the police station, also built in 1847. Behind it, what is now the assembly hall has been at various times a cheese store and a drill hall. Beside the assembly hall is the entrance to Melcham House. This is a large house of the early 18th century in extensive grounds. It became the social club for Avon Rubber and is now derelict. The new Melcham community campus is to be built to the south of the house, providing leisure facilities, meeting spaces and a library. Refurbishment of Melksham House is due to form part of the proposals. Returning to the marketplace, facing the town hall is the new hall, built in 1887 as a place for meetings, lectures and a reading room, and donated to the town by Rachel Fowler. It has the same elongated windows as the town hall, despite being 40 years later. Rachel Fowler was the wealthy daughter of Robert Fowler, a local banker and a Quaker. 
Also a devout Quaker, she was one of the main benefactors of the town in the late 19th century, and we will encounter her name several times. In fact, behind the new hall is the Rachel Fowler Centre, in the former Congregational Church, dating from 1773, with a fairly plain ashlar stone front. At the south end of the market place is the Limes, a substantial house dating from the late 18th century. One wing is of ashlar, the other of rubble, but the building is now disfigured by the shop front imposed upon it. Moving up High Street, we now encounter the site of Place House, once the Manor House. It was built in the mid-16th century on the street frontage, slightly to the south of what is now Lloyd's Bank. In 1864, it was bought by a syndicate of local people, the house demolished and the site divided into plots for houses. This is now the private road known as Place Road, with its own private access to the church and containing some fine houses of the late 19th century. Opposite is the King's Arms. This dates from the 18th and early 19th century and was the main coaching inn, with ten coaches calling there every day and connecting the town to places such as Bristol, Bath, Exeter and Reading. Next to it is the Methodist Church of 1872, now the United Reformed Church, by Wilson, Wilcox and Wilson of Bath, which in Pevsner's words combines in a showy and somewhat painful fashion giant Corinthian columns and a big pediment with rock-facing and busy foliage decoration round the Italianate entrances. Next we encounter three impressive early 19th century three-storey three-bay shop buildings built in ashlar stone. Number 14 in the middle is the most impressive with pilasters and a plat band on the frontage. Opposite Kingston's, on the corner of Church Street, dates from the early 18th century, with fine Simon mullioned windows and a good early 20th century shop front. More 18th century buildings are to be found across the road, the best being 24 to 28 High Street, with seven windows at first floor level and a fine scrolled pediment on brackets above a blocked doorway. It has sufficient character to stand up to the awful shop fronts that have been imposed upon it. We have now arrived at the junction between High Street, Bank Street and Lowbourne, with modern shops on two of its three corners. The third corner, consisting of Gompel's Pharmacy and a barber shop, part in High Street and part in Bank Street, was once all one building, as can be seen from its roof. It dates from the early 18th century, but the right-hand part has been refronted in the late 19th century with an attractive façade. Note the scrolled imposts to the door and bay window. This was the home of Robert Fowler in the 18th century, but later became subdivided, with Rachel Fowler continuing to live in one of the houses. We will divert down Lowbourne, the road to Calm, passing 16 to 22 Lowbourne on our right. This is a terrace of four three-storey houses in Ashlar Stone, dating from the early 19th century. Further along, numbers 28A to 34 were originally part of a cloth mill built in the mid-18th century. This group forms a terrace of three three-storey rubble-stone houses facing an octagonal building, now a house, which was a wool-drying house. Lowbourne School was built in 1909 by the County Council to replace the British School, a charity school founded in 1829 on the site adjoining the present school. Opposite the school is Union Street, of early 19th century origin, which contains a sufficient number of cottages of the period to give the street its character. 
At the rear of the terraces, on the north side, is the Ebenezer Strict Baptist Chapel, with a date stone of 1835, built in rubble stone. Back to Bank Street, and we need to retrace our steps a little. The west side of the street contains 18th and early 19th century shops, with the grandest building being the Conservative Club. This dates from the Regency period and is notable for its bow windows, rising up through all three stories. Opposite, behind the post-war shopping development, is the building of the Second Cottage Hospital of 1895, subsequently the Labour Club, which is about to be demolished and replaced with flats. This replaced the first cottage hospital, housed at 4 Lowbourne. Back on Bank Street, Prospect House was built in 1852 to provide reading rooms. The Melcham Mutual Improvement Society, which helped people to learn to read, operated from here. Waitrose stands on the site of an iron foundry. In 1903, it was occupied by Spencer & Co, who grew into the Avon Rubber Company. Opposite, the Bear Inn was once a thriving coaching inn. Further down, by the entrance to Sainsbury's, Domino's Pizza and Clarke's Barber Shop are housed in a picturesque late Victorian building with fine mouldings on the upper stories and the surviving 19th century shop fronts. We now come to the town bridge, which carried the Bath Road across the River Avon. A stone bridge with four arches was built in 1814 to replace the previous wooden structure, which collapsed during a storm in 1809. It was widened in 1929. Northeast of the bridge is the vast Cooper Tyres factory, formerly Avon Rubber, which has been a major employer in the town. Two buildings within the complex are worth a second look. First, on the right after crossing the bridge, is Avon House, built in 1738 by a mill owner named Henry Coolthurst, and now offices of the tyre company. Further up is an Art Deco office building, looking a little sorry for itself. A short distance further, on the other side of the road, we come to the almshouses, donated to the town by Rachel Fowler, to house poor widows and spinsters. Originally called The Retreat, it was built in 1864. Alongside this section of Bath Road is the city, which formed part of the old turnpike road out of the town. It is one of the oldest parts of Melksham. The former Red Lion pub was reckoned to be the oldest pub in Melksham until its closure in 2017. King John is reputed to have frequented it while hunting in Melksham Forest. Beyond it is the Baptist Church, built in 1776 and restored in 1879. The listing described it as having galleries on three sides, inside, with elaborate cast-iron balconies and supported on cast-iron columns. We now retrace our steps. Opposite the Red Lion is the Unicorn Pub, originally two houses from the early 18th century, with two Cotswold-style gables. Between New Broughton Road and the river is Avonside, a conversion of the former Unigate Dairy built in the 19th century to shops, offices and leisure uses. We will now head back into the town to explore the best part of Melksham. Back across the bridge, and just beyond the Bear, is a narrow alleyway. This eventually opens out into Church Walk, which is like stepping into another world made up of 17th and 18th century houses. Some are worthy of special mention. Number 17 is 17th century, and had a bakery at the back in the early 20th century. Number 5 is a 16th century timber frame building with 17th and early 18th century additions. Opposite the Vine House, now two cottages, 
was once a single house with five windows dating to the 18th century. Church Walk opens out into Cannon Square. Pevsner asks what individual houses ought to be singled out. He opts for number 11, an elegant three-storey Georgian house with segment-headed windows at first floor level, but the whole group within which it stands is good. It stands guard at the entrance to the Church of St Michael, a large perpendicular structure. The church is first mentioned in the Doomsday Book, but there is no evidence of a Saxon church. The present structure was restored by T. H. Wyatt in 1845, when the tower was moved from the central crossing to its present location. A path leads round the side of the church where we find St. Michael's Court. This was originally a 15th century tithe barn, remodelled into a school by G. E. Street in 1878, and now residential. Now we retrace our steps back to Cannon Square and then via Church Street to High Street. On the way we pass one of Melksham's most distinctive buildings, the Round House in Church Street. This was built as a wool and cloth drying room. With the demise of the cloth trade it has survived in a number of other uses, including an armoury for the Volunteer Rifle Corps, the Tourist Information Centre and a comic shop. We will head back to the marketplace and take Spa Road, the road to Devizes, out of town. On the right hand side is a fine group of Regency houses with fine wrought iron balconies and canopies, now a hotel. A little further on we encounter a hump in the road which is where the bridge over the Wilson Barks Canal used to be. This was the location of a busy wharf throughout the 19th century until the canal's closure in 1914. The spa is located on the edge of the existing urban area. Springs were discovered at Bower Hill in 1813 and in 1815 a company was formed to develop a spa. A pump room and houses for visitors were constructed and the spa enjoyed a brief period of prosperity until 1822. Three imposing three-storey semi-detached houses were built to house visitors and they can still be seen, forming a line at an angle to the road as the whole ensemble, including the pump room and a fourth two-storey semi-detached residence, were designed to form a crescent. All are now converted to residential use. Our final building is Woolmore Manor. This is a fine building with a date stone of 1631 below the central first floor window. It was built by George Hulbert, a London citizen and vintner, reputedly to a design by Inigo Jones. It is of English bond brick with ashlar coins and has four cross gables. There are relieving arches over all ground and first floor windows. It has a grade two star listing. And that concludes our tour of Melksham and its many interesting buildings.